Hello, everybody. Now we are going to uh, see how we calculate the UCS and junk modulus uh, using cylindrical curves. So the way that we calculate these two parameters are is using uh, an axial load. We are going to place the sample in between these two sides and we are going to apply a force over the cylindrical sample. Uh, this sample, as we apply the force, is going to get shorter to by an amount delta L. And that amount delta L compared to the initial length that we have is going to give us the strain that we have. Uh, this is going to be combined with the stress, which is calculated as a force over the area of the cylindrical sample. When we combine strain with stress, we can calculate the junk modulus as a differential stress with respect, with respect to the differential strain that we are applying on the rock. Then uh, we can calculate the UCS as the peak force that the sample is able to hold over the area of the cylinder. The workflow that we use to calculate this is through four steps. The step one is just to measure the sample. The step two is the setting up the loading frame. The step three is fracturing the rock. And the step four is the data analysis. Uh, we see that in our first step, we have to not only to measure the sample, but we have to quality check it to see if actually it's a good sample to perform the measurements. So this is because samples are not perfectly cylindrical. So we have to do some measurements before uh, using the sample. The first, we are going to control the diameter of the sample. So our first question in here is, is the sample straight? If the sample is straight, what we see is that measurements at different uh, parts of the sample are going to give nearly the same diameter. And then the diameter of the sample is going to be the average of them. Then we are going to measure the length. With the length, we are going to control as well if the end phases are parallel or not. This is to be sure that the force that we are applying is actually along, uh, is parallel to the axis of the, of the plug that we are using. Again, we are going to measure at different angles and we are going to average the measurement to obtain an average length. Finally, we are going to measure the weight of the sample. Then we are going to setting up the loading frame. So first, we are going to control as well that our end phases in the loading frame are parallel one respect to the other. This means this bottom with this lower part. And then we are going to use a level just, and we have to be sure that the bubble on top and at the bottom are having the same direction. So we ensure that our strain uh, stress applied is along, uh, is parallel to the axis of the sample. Then we are going to seed the sample. To seed the sample, we have to check the parameters that we have to handle uh, the, the frame. So when we operate the frame, what we are moving is the lower part of the frame. Based on that, we are going to measure two main parameters. Channel one, which is the load that we are applying uh, in terms of force, and channel three, which is the displacement, which is, uh, this indicates the vertical displacement that we have with the sample. And then 
we can choose whether to move the lower part either up or down to increase or decrease the force that we are applying over the sample. To control the speed at which we are moving this uh, lower section of the frame, we are going to use the button speed. Once we click on speed, we can see that we can change the uh, speed. So F2 is going to be used just to choose the digit and F3 and F4 are going to use to either de increase or decrease by one the value of the rate. In these experiments, we are going to use only two values, one value for seating speed and one slower value for displacement speed. So when we want to seed the sample, we are going to use the seating speed. In the seating speed, we are going to put in contact the upper part of the frame with our sample without making the axial strain uh, contact the uh, lower part, uh, which means that we are going to move up until we see that the force slightly increases. This is an indicator that actually the sample is in contact with the frames. Then we are going to place and hold the strain gauge. Actually, in here we are going to see that the displacement two is going to slightly increase as well, indicating that we are having measurements in both of these channels. Finally, we are going to place just a protective plastic around the sample just in case that it fractures and explodes, we, we are uh, safe from this issue. So the final picture before fracturing the rock is this. We are going to have the sample in contact, the strain gauge placed, and the protective plastic around the sample. So once we have these three aspects, the sample, we can start fracturing the rock. Now we are going to follow the same procedure, but instead of using the set sitting speed, we are going to use the displacement speed. Now we can repeat loading and unloading forces to see how Jan Maurus works for during this loading and unloading process. So first we are going to increase the force moving up the bottom and then moving down to see the unloading. And we are going to repeat this, this cycle a couple of times and then increase until we fracture the rock. Once we fracture the rock, what we observe is that we have a great force drop. And then we can stop our measurement since we are going to observe that the rock is fractured. Once we stop, we can take a picture of the fracture and we can extract the data file. Uh, the fracture rock will look like this. So after we extracted the data and we clean all the laboratory, we move into the data analysis. What we see is that we are going to have many measurements with our respect to time and where we have only two channels that are going to be useful for us which are force and the displacement two. From these two parameters, we are going to calculate the jam modulus and the UCS. So what we do in here is actually we are going to filter only the force and the uh, change in length. And we are going to include now the initial longitude of the sample and the diameter of the sample to calculate the area. Based on that, we can transform our force and our vertical displacement into stress and vertical strain. From this, we are going to see a plot with this shape. And we can choose a, an interval to calculate the jump modulus during, either during loading or either during unloading as the slope of the uh, line that we are measuring. Finally, 
we can choose the peak stress, at the, which is the point at the rock is broken, as uh, as our ECS. And now that now we have our three parameters, which is young models, both loading and unloading, and finally the UCS. 